Welcome to everyone who's joining our virtual class today on understanding care link reports for the Minimed 670G system. We are excited to have you all with us. Our goal is to provide you with helpful information on interpreting and understanding care link personal software reports for the Minimed 670G system. Oftentimes, your provider may download your data for your insulin pump at your clinic visits. But you can also download your data at home to see your information on various reports that we will review today. These reports can help you better understand your numbers and improvements that could be made when managing diabetes. My name is Amy Luck, and I'm a Senior Clinical Territory Manager out of Columbus, Ohio. I've been working with Medtronic for almost five years now, working in the field with those wearing our devices and with providers. I will be your presenter today to help guide you through this virtual class. Just a reminder, we will be discussing reports for the Minimed 670G system during this live stream. The Minimed 670G system is currently approved for those ages 7 and up who are living with type 1 diabetes. There are four reports that we will be reviewing today, including the Assessment and Progress Report, the weekly review report and the log report, the logbook report and the device settings snapshot. To access CareLink personal software from home, please visit carelink.minimed.com. If you have not already done so, you can sign up for a free account where you will set up a username and password. This will allow you to log in and upload your insulin pump. Once you are logged into CareLink personal, account and you have downloaded your insulin pump, click on the reports tab located in the top right. These are some examples of the various reports that you have access to. The four highlighted here are the reports that we will be taking a deep dive into today. Once you've selected the reports tab, Select the report you want to review by clicking Add to List, and then select the Generate Reports button as shown on this page. Just so you know, you can generate reports by time frame. For example, you can view a report by weeks or by months as shown at the top, or you can customize to a specific time frame. We will begin by looking at the Assessment and Progress Report. This is one of my favorite reports as it gives a broad overview of your information. There are four major sections of the Assessment and Progress Report that I'd recommend you take a look at. These include the glucose data trends, the high and low analysis, statistics that can help you understand changes between two time periods, and your time and range results, oftentimes referred to as TIR. Beginning with the glucose trends on the Assessment and Progress Report, this section visually highlights how your glucose tends to rise and fall. The important thing to remember when looking at this chart is that anything in blue is the most recent data. If you choose to compare your data with a previous time frame, this will show in orange. The areas that have more shading, like on this chart between 8 a.m. and 9 a.m., it means there is more variability with your glucose around that time. The black dotted line is the average glucose trend over the selected time period. In this example, you can see this person is normally at about 160 milligrams per deciliter at 11 a.m. Finally, the numbers at the top of the trend, like the 1, 2, and 3 that you see here, represent any patterns that may be occurring with your glucose when it's out of the target range. We will further discuss this on the next slide. Patterns on this report are broken down into groups. Hypoglycemic patterns, or low glucose patterns, and hyperglycemic patterns, or high glucose patterns. As you can see in this example, this patient had two low patterns and one high pattern. If you are seeing patterns like this on your report, you may want to talk to your healthcare provider about why a pattern is occurring. It's possible that some adjustments may be needed with your settings to help you better manage your diabetes control. The statistics report has two columns of information. The blue column 
represents your most recent data. The orange column represents older data. One statistic I'd recommend looking at in this report is the time spent in auto mode. You can see this person spends about 90% of their time, which is great. If you are spending less than 85% of the time in auto mode, you may want to talk to your doctor to see if any adjustments need made to your settings. Sometimes adjustments are not needed, but rather an evaluation of behavioral patterns. For example, if you are not staying in auto mode because of not addressing alerts and alarms, that would be considered a behavioral pattern. We will see reasons for auto mode exits in the upcoming slides. I also recommend glancing at the infusion set change and reservoir change statistics. As a reminder, your set should be changed every two to three days. You can check to make sure you are being compliant by using this report. Time and range is the time being spent between 70 to 180 milligrams per deciliter over a selected time frame. Changes to the amount of time you spend in range are often evaluated by your provider. You can easily view the same analysis as your provider by looking at the section of your report that you see here. As always, the blue A section is your most recent data. The green area is the time spent between 70 to 180 milligrams per deciliter. The yellow is the time spent higher than 180 milligrams per deciliter. And the red is the time spent below 70 milligrams per deciliter. In this example, this person has spent 79% of time in range with 1% low and 20% high. If you notice that your time spent low or high has increased, you may want to talk to your healthcare provider. He or she can also recommend what time and range goals you should be working towards as it varies person by person. One quick thing I want to mention is how to make sure your settings match what your provider sees. You can easily adjust your viewing parameters to show the 70 to 180 milligrams per deciliter range I mentioned for time and range. For some people, your settings default to the correct values automatically. For others, the system defaults a high value to 140 milligrams per deciliter. If you need to make a change, once logged in, you can click on the section at the top right labeled Preferences, then change the BD target high range to 180 and select Update. The second report we will look at for the MiniMed 670G system is the weekly review report. The weekly review report gives a daily breakdown that shows your glucose trend broken out by day, as well as insulin delivery. You'll also find details about SmartGuard automode exits in this report. The sensor tracing on the weekly review report allows you and your healthcare provider to identify trends that might be occurring throughout the week as your glucose values rise up and down. As a reminder, the sensor is taking a reading every five minutes, and those readings are used to form this trend line. The bottom gray bar of the graph displays the time of day. The left-hand side are the glucose values in milligrams per deciliter. The numbers on the graph along the trend line correspond to a blood glucose entry, which displays as a white circle. And any circles with a black dot represent a calibration that also occurred at the time of testing. Information on this report can help identify what may have led up to a potential high or low glucose. For example, if a low glucose of less than 70 milligrams per deciliter was on the graph and a food bolus occurred prior to the low, you might consider the accuracy of the carbohydrate amount that was entered at that meal. Information about SmartGuard automode exits can be viewed on this report. You and your provider may be able to work together to determine ways to avoid auto mode exits using this information. For example, this person had three separate auto mode exits that were related to alarms. If your report showed a similar exit, the data could prompt your provider to talk with you about how to remove barriers you are experiencing for addressing alarms. As a reminder, more time spent in auto mode can help increase the time and range that we saw earlier on the green bar from the assessment and progress report.
Insulin delivery on the weekly review report shows any autobasal that is occurring as seen on the graph in the pink. The pink, the pink straight line on the far right near dinner represents that this person was in manual mode, which uses a previously programmed basal rate. On the bottom in purple, we can see the bolus amount in units along with the carbohydrate gram amount being entered in the orange. The number in the brackets represents the number of boluses that occurred within three hours. This information not only helps you to understand the autobasal regulation and when it is occurring, but it also helps identify how boluses from food and corrections impact your numbers. The third report we will look at is the logbook report. The logbook report displays information about the bolus delivery of insulin for carbohydrates. The bolus information contains the glucose number at the top as shown in yellow, the carbohydrate grams entered as shown in black, and the bolus amount that the pump delivered as shown on the bottom. The highlighted color of the BG will vary. The yellow shown here represents that glucose is high and outside of the target range but in the pump. The red would reflect a low glucose. If there is no color, that means the glucose was within the target range. When you look at the logbook as a whole, look for patterns at mealtime. For example, are your glucose numbers always yellow at lunch or red at dinner? If you see a pattern, this may prompt your health provider to make adjustments to your settings to help keep your glucose in range. The device settings displays information on the settings that are programmed into the insulin pump. We will review some of the information that is included on the next slide. It is important for you to know your device settings for two reasons. One, with more appointments moving to telehealth, you may need to make a change that is advised by your doctor while at home. And two, if you ever receive a replacement pump or upgrade to a different pump, and need to reprogram your settings. Your local Medtronic rep or the 24-hour technical support team can also assist in the event that you need help with programming a specific setting that your healthcare provider has recommended. Some of the settings included in the device settings are the active insulin time and the carbohydrate ratios with time. These two settings are the only settings that your doctor may adjust while in auto mode. Remember, in auto mode, the autobasal being delivered is adjusted based on glucose values every five minutes. The basal rate, target range, along with the insulin sensitivity factor are also included on this report. Your doctor may also assess these device settings as compared to your auto mode insulin usage to make changes in case you are exited from auto mode into manual mode. That wraps up the main report insights we'll review today. Please quickly review this important safety information for the MiniMed 670G system. There is a special warning that's shown here for folks using the system who are between the ages of 7 and 13. Finally, here is the important safety information for the CareLink software.